so very good morning my dear students uh, today i will be discussing islamic education in india salient features before entering the topic if i tell islamic education is not islamic education you might have heard the term roman is not not roman but here i tell islamic education is not islamic education can any one of you tell me why why did i tell or why do i tell islamic education is not islamic education any one of you can just tell madam padipikkalalla ennayirikkilli so it's not to teach something islam madam padipikkalalla yeah you are right actually islamic education was not uh, some educational system which was teaching some uh, religious concepts of islam actually islamic education is the educational system which was prevailing during the medieval period in india and it is known as islamic education just because during the medieval period india was being ruled by muslim kings yeah you are right so we can just look at the period 80 to 80 8 uh, to 18th century ad is recorded as the medieval period in india actually before that muslim kings were there it is told that bakhtiyar khilji was coming to india during ad 1100 and the the universities takshashila and nalanda were destroyed by batyar khilji it is told so in history you can see that but the medieval period is 8 to 18th century ad and muslim kings were ruling the country during the time and medieval period so it sent with the arrival of britishers on power in india you will learn all these things later so education during medieval period is known as islamic education just because muslim kings were ruling the country and they were arranging the educational process they were organizing the educational system and as we told earlier uh, just as in the case of vedic period people were divided broadly into four strata during medieval period in india not on the basis of caste but on the basis of the status in the society i just mentioned this one when i was talking about social stratification in india during different periods there was social strat there had been social stratification during very period then there was social stratification during islamic period too people were divided into four categories four strata and these four categories were the first category was aristocrats aristocrat group were consisting of the sultan and his relatives nobility land lords land holders hindu rajas chiefs hindu merchants and bankers and look the wealth and power were centered around these people the people who were living in the palace of the sultan like his relatives sons and daughters wives then hindu rajas actually you if you think about the mughal period if you think about the medieval period actually there was an emperor or mughal emperor and there were different kings under the emperor so these rajas the kings 
also were considered as aristocrats. Then army people, ministers, all, all such people were coming under this group, aristocrats. And the second group was priests. And here again, uh, among the Hindus, they were the Brahmins and among the Muslims, they were ulamas, mullahs. Or they were Muslim priests as well as Hindu priests and they had got some prominent place in the society. They were given grants of tax-free land for their maintenance and they're often very powerful. These people also were very powerful. And if you think about the ministers of Muslim kings, you can see Brahmins were the ministers and at times Brahmins were, they were the office bearers of the emperors. The ulamas wielded great influence on the Muslim sultans and often influenced their policies. They were advisors. The Muslim priests were, uh, priests were the advisors. They were giving some advisors. They were giving some instructions to the Muslim emperors. And sometimes the priests were not interested in religious affairs, but were more interested in worldly affairs. And this is what is happening uh, even now. A section of priests are not interested in real religious matters. They will be misusing religious matters just for getting some money, just for getting some material wealth. And this is this it had it was there and it uh, is there still. So aristocrats, then priests, <coughs> then town people. And if you look at the towns during the medieval period, merchants, traders, artisans were living at the town. The officers, the soldiers, the higher officers, the higher military officers were regarded among the aristocrats. But the lower officers, the soldiers, the army people were living at the town. And they also had got some influence. They also had got some power. They also had got some, uh, some VIP status. And you can see places where the Sufi and Bhakti saints lived and places which housed important temples and mosques had become pilgrim centers. And you can see artisans today. Just like the Vaishyas during the Vedic period, Town people also got some importance during the Mughal period. And they are the counterparts of Vaishyas. Then you can see <laughs> peasants, just like Sutras, lived in the villages and were often the worst of. They hadn't got any power, they hadn't got any right, they hadn't got education. They had to pay huge taxes to the state as land revenue. And see, any change of dynasty had no effect on their lives. There was no effect with the change of dynasties. Because the most important aim of all the kings, all the emperors was to extend their kingdom, to widen their jurisdiction. So all the power were just centered around, was just centered around three categories of people, aristocrats, priests, and town people. The peasants were not enjoying anything which was being enjoyed by aristocrats, priests, and town people. So this is the social stratification during the Mughal period, during the Islamic period. Uh, who got educated is a question. Only the three prominent categories were given education. Aristocrats, priests and town people. And persons were completely ignored in the case of education. 
they hadn't got any sort of education they hadn't got any sort of formal education because they were the workers just like shutras during the vedic period so i think you have got an idea on islamic period okay though the kings uh, they, though there was some change in the case of dynasty though there was some change in the case of kings and emperors the atmosphere was just like just like the atmosphere of vedic period the circumstances the social circumstances the social patterns the social relationships everything was just like is vedic period so we have to talk about education as i told earlier islamic education is not islamic education we call it islamic education sometimes we call it medieval education sometimes we call it islamic education is often called as islamic education but it's not real islamic education because islamic education was not education on islam and related aspects it was not for giving something about islam yes there was some religious education i admit but what we call islamic education nowadays is not islamic education because it was not the real intention the core intention of giving education during islam during the islamic period during the mughal period or during the medieval period was not to give religious education you will see it later okay it was the educational system prevailed during the medieval period that's the period of muslim rulers in india is uh, just called islamic education because the education was arranged the education was organized by muslim kings in india during the medieval period uh, so i think that uh, you have got the background you have got some idea on the background you have got some idea on the age or the era now before talking about the islamic education in india i have to tell islam and education sometimes you may be asked a question whether muslim kings were giving any importance to education in india or whether islam was giving any importance to education in india you have to answer it as we told in the case of vedic education if you are asked whether education was something important during the vedic period then you can tell yes because the word veda is veda came from the word with with means knowledge vedic age means age of knowledge so the age the vedic period was giving some importance great importance to education similarly when you think about islam and education when you think about islamic education in india sometimes you may be asked whether muslim kings were giving importance to education then you can give some points so i may be giving you some general perspective the matter is that islam has given an inevitable place for knowledge and education and you can see the following slides which show before you some of the teachings of islam to feel that inevitable place of knowledge okay you can just look at these items and this is a quotation from prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he once told be a scholar or a student or a listener or a lover never be a fifth one be a scholar you should either become a scholar a teacher or a person who has got lots of knowledge yes try to be a scholar first and if you are not able to be a scholar you should be a student and this one you can see in different traditional aspects it tells about lifelong learning you should be a student throughout your life so if you can be become 
a scholar, then just try to be a scholar. And if you're not able to become a scholar, then just try to be a student. And if you're not able to get education, if you're not able to become a scholar, just be a listener. Just try to listen to some people, some scholars or some students. Be a listener to pieces of knowledge. And if you are not able to be a listener to knowledge, because you have got some other work, then just become a lover of knowledge. Just become a lover of scholars. Help them. Just become a lover of students. Help them. And just become a lover of those who are listening to knowledge. So you should try to be a scholar or a student or a listener, at least, at least a lover of knowledge never be a fifth one. So uh, this is, uh, this, uh, these words show the importance of education. And again, you can see uh, another quotation from Professor Lawrence. It is better to educate one's child than to give gold in charity. If you have got a gold coin in your hand, that means if you have got money, and if you see a person, if you see a poor man, and if you see a child, and if you have to spend this money, either for this poor man or for this child, you would better spend that money for giving education for this child instead of giving that or that gold coin or that money to the poor man. Because when you educate a person, that person will become a helper of poor people in the future. If you are giving proper education, okay. If you are giving real education to a person, he will get some humanity. He will get some human values. He will get some social values. So if you want to spend your money for goodness, it is better to spend that money for giving education to a child instead of spending it or instead of giving it to a poor man. So it is better to educate one's child than to give gold in charity. And this is another quotation. Then another quotation is their knowledge should be sought from the candle to the grave. Again from Prophet Solomon. Knowledge should be sought from the candle to the grave. That means you should start education from the cradle and you should not stop getting education until you die. And this, uh, this concept you will see in different aspects of education, education from warm to top, from the warm of the mother to top. Or it starts from warm. And you can see this one in your Hindu Itihasa. Actually, Abhimanyu got some education when he was in the tomb of the wife of Arjuna. Yeah, I think uh, it was Uttara, yeah? What is the name of the mother of Abhimanyu? Uttara, or, yeah? Yes? Yes, Uttara, Uttara, yes, Uttara. you're right. Yes, you're yes. right. Arjuna was... Ar Arjuna was teaching Uttara how to arrange Padma Vyuha. And Abhimanyu was in the tomb, sorry, in the womb. And Abhimanyu learned how to array, uh, how to enter Padma Vyuha. But when, uh, sorry, Ab that when Arjuna started telling about how to come out of the Padma Vyuha, Uttara fell asleep. So Abhimanyu only learned how to enter Padma Vyuha and he did not learn how to come out of Padma Vyuha. So he was killed in the Kurikshetra war. So education starts from the war. And here you can see this one. According to the prophet, 
you should start education from the cradle and you should not stop your education till you die then <laughs> another beautiful words from prophet i was wanted to hear this uh, these words the almighty at first created pen and ordered it right and it wrote on this post all the items to be written till the end of the world the first item created by god almighty was pen and that pen getting order from the almighty just wrote all the things which would be written till the end of the world so i just to show all these things to show that islam was giving or islam is giving much importance great importance to education and muslim kings though they came to india for conquering different areas though they came to india just for a ruling india by defeating the native kings they gave great attention they paid great attention for giving education to the people and the medieval period was a transitional period in india actually if you if you if you ask whether it was a modern period you cannot tell that it was a modern period and if you ask whether it was a traditional period again you cannot tell it was a traditional period there was a trans it was a transitional period when you look at the medieval period in india you can see some signs of modernity it kept some aspects of antiquity i mean traditional aspects at the same time it accepted some modern items sadharana nammal malayalathil parannu pole as we told in malayalam illathu ninnu porappadana amma thattittilla ennu parayunnu pole adu paramparagathamaaya chindagal nu porappettundu but it has uh, it was uh, it had in its reach modernity so you can see some modern aspects in the case of education given by muslim kings in india but at the same time it was keeping some aspects of traditional education so it was a transitional period in india and see when we think about aims of education first we have to tell about the aims of education general aims of education according to islam then we have to move towards aims of education in medieval india so there were two types of education i will tell you in general in islam education general aims of education according to islam are inculcation of islamic faith spreading islamic faith inculcation of islamic beliefs in the minds of the people that was one of the aims of education or still it is one of the aims of education according to islam then preparation for life hereafter islam believes in a second life according to islam after death we will be we will be living another life life hereafter and those people who are doing something virtuous will be entering paradise those people who are doing some evils will be entering hell and this is the concept of islam so uh, islam was giving importance to make the people prepare for life hereafter and this life is considered as a place where people are preparing for life hereafter then self realization through worshiping the almighty and this is just like moksha self realization education was giving just for 
self-realization. It was one of the most important aims of education, according to Islam. It is one of the most important aims of education in Islam. And there is a word in a Quran. Uh, it tells that, uh, sorry, uh, the words of Prophet, Man arafa rabbahu arafa nafsa. One who realizes his own self will realize God. And this is the concept. Self-realization means realizing oneself and through realizing oneself, realizing the God. And education for was education is given for that too. Then another thing is promotion, promoting universal brotherhood. And this is another aim of education in Islam. Then character and moral development. As I told earlier, each and every traditional educational system was giving much importance to character and moral development. Then socio-economic welfare, then intellectual development. These are the aims of education, general aims of education according to Islam. And see, in India, actually education during the medieval period got some other aims. And this should be kept in your mind. Muslims came to India just for expanding their kingdom. And Britishers came to India for trade, but later they got power. So they started giving education and they had got some other aims. And here, if you think about aims of education during the medieval period in India, one of the aims of education was propagation of Islamic principles and culture in India. We cannot, de we cannot deny it. Okay, It was one of the aims. It was not the only aim, but it was one of the aims. Propagation of Islamic principles and culture in India. Because lots of priests came, Muslim priests came with kings and they were propagating Islamic principles in India. It was one of the aims of education. Because after the emergence of Muslim scholars in India, lots of people entered Islam. So it was one of the aims of education during the medieval period. Then, Mughal kings were giving some secular education. I mean, they were giving education for all. As I told earlier, their real intention was to expand their kingdom. And when they started expanding their kingdom, they needed workers for them. I told you that it was a transitional period and Mughal kings were accepting some modern, some modern methods, modern ways in their ruling. So they needed clerks, they needed army people, they needed officers. So their real intention by giving education to Indians were inculcation of clerical skills because they needed clerks, they needed uh, such people for ruling the country. So one of the aims of education was inculcation of clerical skills. Then inculcation of war related skills. If you look at the army people of Muslim kings, you will see that most of them were Hindus. You cannot deny that. If you look at the Mughal kings, you can see that their ministers were Hindus. They Army generals were Hindus, their office bearers were Hindus. So another aim of education during the Islamic period was inculcation of war-related skills. Then creation of political experts. They were ruling the country, the whole country, and they had to contact with the native kings. They had to discuss with different kings. Because if you think about the picture of Mughal period, you would see that there were different wars. And if you look at different sides, 
you, you, you will see that different kings were joining some emperor and different kings were joining some other emperor. So there were relationship. There was relationship between emperors and kings. So they, they needed communication. They needed communication with native kings to make them join the emperor. So creation of political experts was another aim of education during the Islamic period or medieval period. Then promotion of art and literature. And this is something important because when we were talking about social diversity, we told that Muslim kings came from Persia. Actually, they came from Afghanistan and such regions. Afghanistan, Iran, and such regions. And they had got some Persian culture. I uh, see, nowadays we are telling some stories from 1001 Nates, Al Flaila. And it was from Persian literature. We, we tell the story of Alauddin. We tell the story of Zindabad. We tell the story of Ali Baba and thieves and all these came from Persia. So they just propagated Persian art and literature in India. We know that Urdu, Urdu was there. Then different stories, different, a new type of music came there, a gazelle and such music. So promotion of art and literature, especially the Persian art and literature was another aim of education during the Islamic period, then promotion of architecture. And this one, again, something important because now we, uh, we have got different palaces and such things. If you go to Delhi and uh, nearby places, you can see Red Fort, you can see Taj Mahal, you can see Qutub Minar. And all these buildings have got uh, some Persian style of architecture and it was also an aim of education during the islamic period so think uh, you have to think that actually their main intention was to expand their kingdom but when muslims tell about muslim kings they will be glorifying the kings and when hindus tell about Hindu kings, they will be glorifying the kings. This is what is happening there. Actually, they had got any sort of religious intention. I feel so, because I have uh, read such books. They had got only the intention of expanding their kingdom. So these were the aims of education during the medieval period. So, And if you think about educational system during the medieval period, or we can think about the educational system during the medieval period. We just saw the educational system during the Vedic age. It was Gurugula system of education. And we just saw the Buddhist period and the educational system was Sangha Vihara. And here, during the Muslim period, actually, there came institutionalized education. And there were two levels or two stages of education. And there were two types of institutions, maktab and matrasa. And see, you should not approach this matrasa just as you approach the matrasa in Kerala nowadays. In Kerala, madrasas are religious educational institutions, primary religious educational institutions. But during the medieval period, madrasa were colleges or higher educational institutions. You can look at the words. Maktab is a word which was derived from katab. Kataba in Arabic means to write. Maktab in Arabic means a place where writing is taught. That means a